everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the official AvWeb Landing Light Test Range. And what you're looking at is the harsh yellow glow of one of these things. This is a GE 4509. It has been the standard aircraft landing light since shortly after Orville took off from Kitty Hawk. In fact, it began life as a tractor headlight, and the fact that tractors now have LEDs tells you how far aviation hasn't come in the last 75 years. But the good news is that LEDs are rapidly displacing incandescence for landing lights, for navigation lights, and interior lighting, but lots of old aircraft haven't upgraded yet. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's available and see if some of the new products have improved. But first, let's go to the studio and take a look at the basic technology. This is the Andy Rooney portion of the video, but you know, old Andy never had 12 volt leads to play with, so stay close for the science project. On my bench here, I've got an assortment of LED landing lights. Did you ever wonder why they call them PAR 36s? You probably didn't, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. PAR means parabolic, aluminized, or sometimes anodized reflector, and that's really the G old GE 4509 style I mentioned in the lead-in. 36 refers to the diameter, and it's given in eighths of an inch. So 36 divided by eight is four and a half inches. I don't know why they do it that way, but I do know that LED lamps follow the same convention because they have to fit in the same brackets. I've got several samples here, but before I go on, I'll mention that the week I was shooting this video, Wheelan Engineering bought Lopresti Aviation and its LED subsidiary called Illumivation. They'll all be under a new company called Wheelan Aerospace Technologies. Now, all of these lamps are different, but they have one thing in common, they're all brighter than the previous generation LEDs, and they keep getting brighter all the time. I'll cue to the cheap graphic here to show you why. Light emitting diodes consist of what's called a PN junction. You have learned about that in physics if you had stayed awake. The P side of the junction is made of stuff like gallium arsenide or gallium phosphide, depending on the LED color. The P side is often described as having holes into which electrons from the N side flow when a voltage is applied across the junction. Well, really, the P and N flow toward each other, and when they combine, as you'll surely recall from high school chemistry, the electrons change state. That is, they shift orbits and energy is released. In an LED, that pops off some light energy, photons. Want more light? Drive the thing with more current. More light yet, more current, until you fry the junction and it all goes dark. LED manufacturers are constantly improving their products by tweaking that PN junction. When lamps like these first appeared, they were good for about 80 lumens per watt. Now they're up to 160 lumens per watt and still going north. Lumens, by the way, is a linear scale, but your eyes sense light on a logarithmic scale, so double the measured brightness might not look twice as bright to you. It might not look any brighter. Each of the manufacturers build LED lamps a little differently, but all of them use some form of multiple LEDs with a lens system. Now, Whelan kindly sent me the board from one of their landing lights, the Parmepheus PAR36, if we zoom in here, these yellow squares are the actual LEDs, and this board has a dozen of them. These little chips are what do the current and temperature regulating to keep the LEDs from being overdriven and burning out. Now I've got a 12-volt power supply here, so I will go ahead and fire this one up. Yeah, I'll go ahead and laugh, but you can't be too careful with advanced technology. Okay, so I'm goofing around with the welder's helmet, but in fact, the LEDs really are painful to look at directly. That's what 160 lumens per watt looks like. And as bright as it is, it is utterly worthless unless you have one of these. This is a specialized lens that goes over the LEDs and collimates or focuses that light into a coherent beam. If there's a secret sauce to LED technology, it's the lens, and all of these manufacturers do it a little differently. All the lamps here have some version of that type of lens, but this big one here, this is a PAR46 from Illumivation. 
It actually uses a parabolic reflector and it only has four LEDs, kind of an unusual design. Now when we get back out on the range, we'll try uh, these lamps. We've got uh, one from Wheel and the Parmetheus. We've got a couple from uh, Aero LEDs or Aero LEDs if you prefer. And we've got a small one from Illumivation. Before we go out there though, I want to show you one other thing. This is an HID that uh, La Presti Aviation sent us. High intensity discharge. They've been marketing these for about two decades now. They're very bright, they're also very expensive, and a little bit difficult to install because they require a ballast and they also have a power wiring, but we'll take a look at the brightness when we get out there on the range. All right, so much for the basic technology. To see what these lamps can actually do, I've set up a range here with reflective markers at 50, 100, 200, and 300 feet. Actually, the one at 300 you really won't be able to see because it's just a measure point. But I'll step out of the way here, and this is the GE4509, and as you can see, it has a hot yellow narrow beam. It doesn't illuminate too well to the sides. It does hit the 300 foot point, but barely. And I'm going to go right into a comparison with one of the brighter LEDs. This is the laser LED from Illumivation. Right away, you'll notice that the beam is much brighter, it's cooler, and the throw is very even all the way out to the 300 foot marker, although obviously the brightness dropped off. Since the point of this exercise was to compare newer lamps with older models, this is a good place to show the test data. These are the brightness measurements at 50 feet in lux. I use a lux meter because I happen to have a lux meter. The actual values are less important than the comparisons over the previous models. There are two apples to apples comparisons here between the previous versions and the latest generation. The Aero LED Sunspot is, as claimed, just a little brighter than the previous version, which is shown by the red bar. My initial test of the wheel in Parmetheus revealed that it wasn't brighter than the previous version, but in a second test, I fished around and found the brighter center of the beam and found that it does perform a little better. Now, although I did measure the relative brightness with a lux meter, that really only tells part of the story, and it may not be the most important part of the story, because what really matters is how the LEDs, the lamps, illuminate what's out in front of the airplane. So you're looking at the 4509 here. It's clearly not as bright as the LEDs. And we'll take a look at the Aero LEDs Sunspot. This is the more expensive version of the Sunspot. It's a par 36 about 150,000 candela. Uh, it's the $650 lamp. Compare that to the less expensive version at 65,000 candela, it's $349. There's a difference there, but uh, I'm not sure it's a substantial difference. The higher price model has a better throw. It, it illuminates better further out, but as, operationally, I'm not sure it would make that much difference. Either one of these is a vast improvement over any incandescent landing light. Now, as I noted, there's not a dramatic difference between the brightness of the LEDs, but one thing that is dramatic is the higher brightness of the HID type lamps. That's both in measured brightness and perceived brightness. This is a comparison between the GE4509 and the HID. There really is no comparison. Although LEDs have gotten measurably brighter with the latest generation, they aren't nearly as bright as HID technology and probably never will be. Two things about HIDs. They take a few seconds to warm up to reach maximum brightness, and in this case, the beam is fairly narrow, but you can get wider beam versions. So that's how aviation LEDs work. Want one? Yeah, you know, you probably do. Let's be honest here. If you own an airplane, you're probably not that young and the eyes aren't what they used to be. Even if you don't fly at night, you can install one of these LEDs in place of an old incandescent bulb, leave it on all the time, and the aircraft will be far more conspicuous, especially in the traffic pattern. That just enhances safety. It'll last forever. The guy who buys the airplane from the guy you sold it to will still have it. Which one? Well, if you're a real cheapskate, the Wheeland Parmetheus at $227 is the bargain choice. It's a little more than a fill-up on a Skyhawk. If you want something a little right, brighter, go for the Aero LED Sunspots. They start at $345 and go up from there. 
but let's say you bought one five years ago. Is it worth upgrading to a new, brighter one? You know, I'm going to say it isn't. You're probably not going to notice the difference. If you want to have your eyes absolutely glazed over on the subject of aviation LEDs, if they aren't already, then you need to read the full report in the March 2019 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting, and hey, I was just kidding about you being an old, so don't get sore, okay? But you're probably not that young, right? Just saying. But you know, old Andy never had 12 volt power leads that he couldn't find. But Andy never had 12 volt power leads. Ow! God damn it! If you want to have your fucking Jesus Christ.